Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Poland's broadcasting regulator has extended the operating license for the United States-owned anti-government news channel TVN24. A spokeswoman for the regulator, the National Broadcasting Council, said its panel had voted 4 to 1 to extend the license. The panel still questions whether TVN24 has the right to continue operating and has asked the government for legal clarity. Poland's ruling Law and Justice Party has long argued foreign-owned media distort public debate and do not serve Polish interests. TVN, the parent company of TVN24, is owned by US-based Discovery Inc. by a firm registered in the European Union to adhere to the requirements of the ban on non-European firms owning more than 49% of Polish media. I just wanted to give you some information that today the National Broadcasting Council has completed the procedure regarding the renewal of the license for the TVN24 news programme. This was an absolute majority in the vote with four votes in favour of granting the license and one vote against. Thank you very much. If TVN24 had not received the extension, it was expected to continue operating under a Dutch license. Although the regulator extended the license, it said in a separate resolution that it would ask the government for clear legislation on the ownership question, as well as legal clarification from the Constitutional Tribunal. Parliament is expected to vote shortly on an amendment that would close the loophole, allowing non-European companies to own more than 49% of Polish media. Ukraine's parliament passed a law today that will order the country's oligarchs to register and stay out of politics. The vote came a day after an attempt to kill a top aide to President Volodymyr Zelensky, which officials said could have been a response to the reform. The law provides a definition of oligarch, while giving the authorities the power to designate individuals who meet the criteria. Oligarchs will be forbidden from financing political parties or taking part in privatizations. Top officials, including the president, prime minister and the head of the central bank, would be required to declare any dealings they had with them. President Zelensky says it is necessary to protect the country from powerful businessmen who have corrupted its political system for decades. His opponents say they fear it will be applied selectively to concentrate more power in the president's hands. We want to construct the mechanisms which can ensure a real fight against the oligarchy. Rather than making the show and developing the height that is positioned by the largest parliamentary faction as a fight against the oligarchy. Zelensky's team has suggested anger at the law could be behind an attempt to assassinate Serhii Shafir, a top aide and close friend of the president. Shafir's car was sprayed with gunfire on Wednesday by unidentified individuals as he travelled between two villages outside the capital. Zelensky won a landslide election in 2019, promising to tackle corruption and curb the influence of oligarchs, who have dominated the business landscape since the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 and will influence in politics and the media. Energy ministers from the European Union countries have gathered in Slovenia to discuss the soaring price of gas and electricity across Europe, as some governments drop measures to protect their consumers. Critics say that the EU's increased tax on CO2 emissions is partly to blame for the sharp rise in prices. Benchmark European power prices have rocketed this year, more than trebling in Spain and elsewhere, partly because gas prices have been driven up by factors such as low storage stocks, high EU carbon prices and low renewable energy output. Benchmark European gas prices have risen by more than 250% since January. We will discuss with energy ministers how we can tackle this challenge, EU Energy Commissioner Kadri Simpson said before the meeting. And I also plan to raise today the issue of the energy prices and uh, we will discuss with energy ministers how we can tackle this challenge because it is clear that um, at the current situation Europe needs to invest into renewables because they are really offering an alternative on our dependence on uh, imports of fossil fuels and we have to invest also into the new energy efficiency measures. The EU ministers will on Wednesday also hold their first debate on proposals to toughen EU climate change policies, including proposals to expand the share of renewables in its energy mix to 40% by 2030. <laughs> Convinced that our response must be a more speedy transition to renewable energies. We need to ramp up our efforts for energy efficiency. This will make us independent and more resilient to price fluctuations in the long term, and it makes us independent from economic interests. Some governments, including Italy and Greece, have said they are considering measures such as subsidies or price caps to shield citizens from rising costs as economies recover from the COVID-19 pandemic.
Despite earlier reassurances that the United States would not allow it to happen, some of the tens of thousands of Haitian migrants who have crossed the U.S.-Mexico border in recent days have now been moved further into the United States. On Wednesday, pointing to the deteriorating sanitary situation in the makeshift camps at the border, the United States decided to release some of the migrants in South Texas while deporting others on flights. The resources are stretched at the Valverde Border Humanitarian Coalition Migrant Center in Del Rio, Texas, where volunteers and staff help the release migrants in booking flights and bus tickets to join other family members or friends already in the United States. In the past three days, the center has processed over 1,000 migrants. In contrast, it processed 3,649 migrants in the entire month of August. Many of the families are headed to Houston, where they will have one night of shelter before catching their transportation. There is no funding that's given out at our location. There is no funding that's given out at the migrant family transport location. And in most cases, families have been preparing for this moment. They have their funding ready, and when they don't, they contact their loved ones here in America who help them pay for their final tickets. The U.S. government said it was continuing to fly hundreds of people, including families, back to Haiti, which has been hit by recent political turmoil and natural disasters. United States President Joe Biden ended the expulsion of unaccompanied children under Title 42, but has continued to expel some families. The spokesperson said people who are not expelled are either detained or released with a notice to appear in the immigration court. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.